Yeah, yo, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Devon Tour in raw form, and welcome to another Help Me Devon raw tutorial in the studio. And today, in this Help Me Devon tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to set up your mic and preamp levels when it comes to recording. So, first and foremost, let's create a vocal. Let's record a vocal so we can work with, and then I'll show you exactly how I accomplish that from the start to finish. I'm gonna record into one of my Help Me Devon templates as well, just so it can be a little bit more interesting. Let's do it here okay first thing I'm gonna say is don't make fun of me because I'm about to say absolutely nothing test 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 all right let's do it let's create a vocal yeah whoa yeah 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 I had problems nobody told me tell someone about me I've been stopping I come to a phone and phone like Abu Dhabi when it got me nobody told me that I feel amazed put some money Stop right there and let's cut this off back to you guys okay cool so we created a vocal and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I created that vocal what is the recording chain everything that goes into creating something like that okay so the first thing that I like to do when it comes to my vocals is deciding mic placement and when I say mic placement what I'm really really getting at is the distance between you and the microphone because this makes a huge difference so long story short the closer you are to the microphone the more bass that you'll get out of the uh, sound source so it's something called the proximity effects so basically the closer I am to the microphone the bassier it'll sound I'll experiment and show you what I mean so let's take off all my bells and whistles from my session and from my template. Test, test. And now we're hearing a very bare vocal. Test, test, test. This is a very bare vocal from my uh, session. So now, watch this. I'm going to go really close into the microphone, listen to the difference, and then I'm going to back away, listen to the difference. Test, 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 yeah, test, test. One, two, testing, one, two, yeah, testing, one, two, testing, one, two, testing, one, two, testing, one, two. So you can see that when I got closer to the microphone, there was more bass. There was more of a bottom to it. Now, this is something that you have to decide. Say, for instance, if you're looking for uh, a certain sound from an aggressive rapper, maybe you want him more up on a microphone, or maybe you want him pulled back a little bit more so that he's not so plosive and things like that. So where you place your sound source varies and it should vary from song to song. Listen to the song in context with the sound source when you're doing it and decide how far back you want to record and how far forward you want to record. For me, typically, I'm about three to six inches off of the mic. So right here, I've typically found to be a sweet spot. So right about here, I found to be a sweet spot, which is about, I'd say, three to four inches off of, off of the microphone. I found a sweet spot. But for everyone, it's completely different. And I highly recommend that you choose what you want it to be. Next thing I'll explain to you guys is this. When it comes to your preamp levels, your preamp levels are very, very important. Basically, when I say preamp, I'm saying uh, basically the thing that is boosting and amplifying the signal of the actual microphone. So I know some of you, I don't want you to get discouraged. I have the UA Twinfinity 710. I have an external preamp that then feeds my audio interface. For you, yes, you still have preamps if you just have an audio interface. It's just that your preamps are built on to, uh, uh, you're using the built-in preamps on your inter audio interface. For me personally, I'm using external preamps and bypassing that. Don't worry about it, don't get caught up. Let's just say it like this. So if you look at my preamp, I like to hit the sweet spot of negative 10 dB peaks. Now, you may be saying, why are you choosing negative 10 dB peaks? And the reason why I'm choosing negative 10 dB peaks is because it allows me enough headroom 
to com add more compression, more EQ, and do all kinds of cool things that we do processing wise. And it also keeps me far enough from the noise floor so that I can still have a really clean recording. Now, you may be saying, what is the noise floor? Why are you concerned with it? We'll see it like this. If you record your instrument or your vocal really, really low, what's gonna happen is when you start to boost, you're actually gonna be boosting more of that noise floor. No matter what you do, when it comes to boosting, you're boosting some of that noise floor. So if you record really no close to the noise floor, you're gonna bring up that noise with you so that you can get more volume out of it. As opposed to recording it somewhat higher, like a negative 10 dB, and then when you do boost, you're not boosting so much of that noise floor. Now, why does the noise floor exist? What is the noise floor? Long story short, your electronics, your microphone, your preamp, your audio interface, the electricity in your studio all produce noise. It's not perfect. They, these little bells and whistles, these little things in the circuitry inside your interfaces and things like, things like that uh, actually create noise. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get ahead of that and record a little higher than that noise floor because it's actually really quiet just so you can avoid that noise. Secondly, the reason why you want to record maybe in that negative 6 dB to negative 10 dB range is because now when you start compressing and boosting, uh, at least you have a lot of headroom to work with uh, as opposed to if you record really hot you're going to be introducing clipping and probably going to distort your vocal so i found for me personally especially in my vocal temp uh, chains i found that negative 10 db is really a sweet spot that i like to record it so you can keep that in mind now how do you figure this out i know you're saying to yourself well how do i figure out my peaks are at negative 10 db check this out let's turn on my recording and i want you to pay attention to my preamp so take a look at my preamp right now look at my preamp Yo, 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 I got it, nobody told me nothing about it. I guess I gotta get it, it did it, what it, blood it, bleed it, bit it, bit it, lit it, it did it, did it, bit it, lit it. Everybody know I got it, nobody saw it. Now, when you looked at my preamp, you saw that it was hitting that 10 spot, which is, I like it. That's telling me, okay, I'm at like the negative 10 dB when it comes to my peaks. Now, for those of you that may not have uh, a built-in meter for your preamp, I'll show you another way of figuring out uh, exactly how much uh, signal is coming in uh, to your actual DAW. So this is what I'll do. So let's turn off everything. So everything's off, right? In my actual program, everything's off. And if you see right here, you see the meters. So turn off all your plugins, all of them. Let all your plugins off. And now you can see a natural um, uh, signal of what's actually coming into your DAW. It's not being compressed, it's not EQ'd, there's nothing going on to it, you're just seeing a very natural signal. So now I'm gonna yell into it and see where it peaks at. Yo, 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 when you see it, I gotta get it. Nobody tell me right to tit it, I love it and I hate it. I guess nobody told me nothing but thought and would chase it. I gotta love it, gotta pace it, nobody but base it. And you can see that I'm around that negative 11 a DB range, and that's basically how you can figure out where your peaks are. Try to scat, go for your vocal, try to record as, as much as possible just to see where you're peaking at, and then you turn down your preamp accordingly. Check this out. If I start to record right here, I can just turn down for my preamp, so watch this. Test, whatever you want, I get it, nobody told me anything, and that's what it did you, and you see it got lower. Now watch this, I'm gonna try and keep yelling until I can get to 10. How I want it, nobody told me nothing about it, I flaunt it, I gotta get it, nobody told me nothing, I wanna cheat it, I love it, I hate it, I love when everything is sick. You see what I'm saying? So basically, I'm at negative 10 dB. I saw it and I'm like, okay, great, I'm at that negative 10 dB, that's my peaks, that's a loud part, and that's great. Usually with a client, I'll tell them, record, go as loud as you want, yeah, go ahead, get it out, and then I'll find that sweet spot to try and get that peaks to negative 10 dB. And honestly, guys, that's really the way I like to set up my microphone and my preamp. I literally can do it from my preamp. I decide my mic placement. I look at my DAW and see where my peaks are hitting. And that's it. A lot of people in a lot of amateur recordings don't even look at how much signal is actually coming in. Some of you guys record way too low and some of you guys record way too hot. And that's either you're clipping or you're too close to the noise floor so that when you start boosting, it sounds really bad. You start to get a lot of noise and hiss and all these things because you're recording too quiet or when you're recording too hot, you're clipping. So 
pay attention to your meters when it comes to this and choose wisely when it comes to just doing all of this stuff all in one. So I hope that was really helpful. This was my uh, tutorial on showing you guys how to set up your mic and preamp levels. Uh, make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you want to guys want to see. You can also download this small child template available at helpmedevon.info and um, make sure you follow us at helpmedevon on Instagram and until next time.